It looks like Elizabeth Warren is trying to avoid talking about health care. And with roughly a month to go before the Iowa caucuses, many voters are still undecided. Team Rising is here. We've got Raul Alviar, former national political director for the DNC, and Rachel Bovard, senior director of policy at the Conservative Partnership Institute. All right, so uh, New York Times has this piece, Rachel, on Elizabeth Warren. And you recall the beginning of the campaign, whenever she got asked about health care, it's I'm with Bernie, Medicare for all, et cetera, et cetera. Then she starts getting hit from the right by Pete Buttigieg and others and really being pressured over not wanting to say middle class taxes will go up. So she engineers this whole thing, takes weeks to do it, puts that out. That doesn't satisfy anyone. And then when she comes out with her own separate plan, again, and you were talking about this earlier, and I respond to this, too, because I see some of myself in Elizabeth Warren as, as well. Like the natural pleaser, I want to make everybody happy, let me get an A, what's the right answer here? But by doing that, she really undercut her whole message in campaign, and it ended up appealing to no one. So now, apparently, the move is, let's just not talk about health care at all. Let's just yeah. move on from that and not the, focus the on best, that. Yeah, the best political answer is always to pretend it's not happening and <laughs> look over here. Right. But And that is what she's doing, I think. And I don't think it's going to serve her well, because this is a huge issue for Democrat voters. If you look at the polls, you know, yes, you know, the last debate, they spent a lot of time on climate change, which is high up there, but almost no time on health care. And this yeah. is a very, very big Central. issue. And she hasn't been able to answer these questions questions clearly, to your point. And part of that has been she hasn't been pressed on it by the actual moderators of these debates. Mm -hmm. Washington Post gave her three Pinocchios talking about this plan, and no one asked her about it. And so I do think she has some, some tough questions to answer, um, you know, spe especially on whether or not private health care stays or goes under her plan, because that seems to be the crux of the issue right now. Raul, well, it seems to me that literally every single Democratic candidate, except for Bernie Sanders, has struggled with health care. Like, what's, what's the problem here? Because it seems to me that, at least for Bernie, it's the perfect issue for him. Everyone hates the system. It's something people would want to overturn. It's like you hear revolution that makes a lot of sense. Why is everyone out struggling with this, especially Elizabeth Warren? Well, look, I, I mean, it's 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 a hard issue because health care is a hard issue, right? Um, and we want to make sure that we can get as many people on health care and with a health care plan as possible. So that takes a lot of work. Um, the other thing I think that's a point to this is, is that um, you know, President Obama, uh, we did Obamacare under under his administration, so we have to make sure that we um, build upon that and uh, and make sure that there's a, a, a good pathway for people to get onto to the health care uh, system that we have here. So you have to walk a delicate line, right? Um, you know, the former president of the United States, who happens to be a Democrat, um, actually got it passed, which nobody had before. Uh, and so you want to make sure that that you um, make sure that what he what he did and what the Obama administration did is, is strong and then build upon that as well. So I, I mean, think that's part of the problem. If you, if you ask voters who they trust most on health care, number one is Bernie and number two is Biden. And it's no, no coincidence that those are the two who have been most consistent in their positions. And they're at sort of opposite ends of the spectrum, right? You've got Bernie very clearly for Medicare for all, Joe Biden very, very clearly, clearly on basically what you just said, Raul, let's mm -hmm. build on Obamacare, let's just do a public option, let's like keep it incremental in that approach, but he's been very consistent. And I think that's part of the thing here, too, is just the clarity of your message. Mm -hmm. And you can't ignore this. It's the number one issue that voters say they yeah. care about. So you may care more about banking reform. You may care more about corporate reform or whatever your bailiwick is. you got to meet voters where they are. No, and I think this goes to sort of the central problem with Elizabeth Warren and being who she is, is that, again, she's trying to please all these people, right? She says, even in this article, I'm still with Bernie on Medicare for all. Well, Bernie's been very clear. Your private health insurance is going away and your taxes are going to be raised. People might not agree with that, but they appreciate the honesty, right? She hasn't been able to not do that. <laughs> she's bungled the answer and said a million different things, and she hasn't been clear. So she's either for Medicare for all or she's not. Voters don't know. And I wonder if she's not tracking toward the general right now, and this is what I mean about trying to be everything for everyone, because a Gallup poll in December showed that 54 percent of Americans don't want a public option, right? They still want their private plan. So I, I wonder if she's trying to hedge, uh, but you can't do that in a primary, no, especially you, with this many. you got to win the primary. And, he, yeah. and here's the thing. It's not just that it's unclear. Something has been made very clear to voters, which is that this isn't a priority for her. This is not where her passion is. It is not what she'll fight for on day one. I think that almost matters as much as the specifics of where you come down on health care, ultimately. Yeah, I mean, look, I, you, I think you 
you know, said it. You have to be passionate about an issue because uh, that'll come through to to the to the uh, to the voter, particularly yeah. in Iowa, um, where they do listen to a lot of this stuff and they want to know exactly what your plan is. And if they don't see that passion and that spark behind you, um, that that can tend to turn people off. Uh, but but I you know I also think that she she has given her 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 ideas, um, you know, and I think there's other stuff that people will 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 come on and glom onto that she says that will like. But again, it comes all down to Iowa. Yeah. It's also been interesting to watch her how um, you know dismissive she's been of questions. She almost seems offended that people are are looking at her plan with any kind of you know sharp, critical lens. Critical lens. She's like, well, I have a plan. Don't worry about it. Okay, well, that's Some, not how it works. <laughs> Rachel, something I'm curious about is coming from the right. How do you look at this debate? Because when I see this debate, I sort of say, look, no matter what. These details are President Trump and any Republicans going to call it socialism, no matter what. So, sort of. So, how does this how does this debate look from your eyes? I think taking private health insurance away is not the answer here, but I do think that this is a huge issue, and I don't think anyone has a corner on the solution, right? I think mm -hmm. the right is struggling with this just as much as the left, and I think as a voter, generally speaking, that concerns me. Yeah. And so I wish we could have a, a debate about it without, you know, the sort of, you're pushing grandma off a cliff, well, you're for socialism. Venezuela or grandma, it's Yeah, like, right, well, because we do have a huge problem here. Yeah, and we saw it in 2018 when Republicans flipped the switch on health care, right? Yeah. So yeah. That, that was very right. telling as well. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, I do, those think, I do think with Bernie and Medicare for all, people recognize once you actually get in there, you're going to have to figure out, you know, you're going to have to get people at the table and figure it out. But the messaging is so clear. It's so simple to understand. It is almost a reflection of what Trump did, right, with build the wall in a way, <laughs> because it was it was mess, it was values oriented right. values. I don't agree with, but it was values oriented. People knew what it meant. I think that's why people respond to Bernie so strongly on Medicare for all as a value proposition, as an economic rights proposition. Um, great to have you both. Thank, Thank you so you. much for being here. Thank you here. for having me. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. Tomorrow on Rising, we're going to look at the work of the group Our Revolution and how it's managed to help advocate for a progressive agenda. And journalist Roland Martin shares what he learned during his recent trip to Ghana and how those lessons can apply to the United States. Very interesting. Always great to see you guys. It's so nice to be back. I missed you all. I really did. And Marshall, thank you so much for being here with us as well. We're always grateful to you too. Thanks for having me. Sagar is really pumped to be back. Yes. Have a great day, everybody.